call this meeting of the Denport Community School District Board of Directors to order. Before we get started, I want to apologize for the um, late start of this meeting. The board was in a uh, lengthy discussion about a couple of issues. And there are a lot of things that are really, really important. And two of them that are listed for action on tonight are seven point, I'm trying to get to it, 7.04, which is approval of compensation package for administrative employees, and 7.05, approval of compensation package for non-bargaining, non-administrative employees. <coughs> I'm going to take both of those off of the agenda for this evening. And it is not to say that uh, those issues are not important. They're very, very important. And they're being considered um, with everything else that's going on in the district and that the board and the administration has responsibility for. Uh, that will not be addressed tonight. However, uh, the contracts will still be going out as soon as possible. Is that correct? Okay. Um, and so we'll deal with, with the contracts. Uh, there should be no concern about receiving those contracts, but the issue of the changing compensation is something that we will have to deal with. I just want everybody to be aware, if there's anybody that was here for that in particular tonight, I apologize for that. Um, we'll move on with the rest of the meeting. Director Hayes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I hate to ask you to do anything right now. That's okay. Okay. The Davenport School Board establishes the following priorities to ensure the academic success of all students. Provide leadership and direction to improve the overall learning environment in our classrooms, schools, and district, including the health, safety, security, and happiness of students and staff and to direct and support actions, programs, and activities which reduce the impact of poverty on our students, their families, and our community. Okay, thank you. And Director Beck, would you please read our mission and vision statements? Yes, the mission statement is to enhance each student's abilities by providing a quality education enriched by our diverse community. And the vision statement is education that challenges conventional thinking, prepares all students to compete in a global society, and inspires our students, parents, staff, and community to answer the question, what if? Thank you very much. Are there any board reports? Um, before we, I, I want to uh, mention also Director Gosa is with us. He is participating by phone, which we have determined is appropriate and legal for board members to call in uh, to board members. I just want to make sure everybody is aware he is here. Um, uh, Director DeSalvo. Um, just a reminder, update about Dr. Kobalski. He will finish his classes the end of this week. Um, once he obtains his certification from Loyola, he will submit that electronically to the State of Iowa Board of Educational Examiners. They could take, they've told us, four to six weeks to um, review that and approve it. So at the conclusion of this week, assuming he's going to pass all of his classes, which I'm sure he will, he will have a superintendent's license in the state of Illinois, the state of Wisconsin, as well as the state of Iowa. He has eight years of superintendent experience um, in Wisconsin and taught, and taught in inner school city Chicago schools. So we're very excited to have him come on board. Um, Two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, it's running together, I had the opportunity to attend a meeting um, in Des Moines with three of the state board members. Um, Sandy Schmitz was there, Susan Downs was there. I'm gonna miss some administrators. We had Corey Guy there, we had Jake Klipsch there. 
Dr. Goldstone was there, Claudia Woods, TJ, myself. I apologize if I forgot anybody. Who did I forget? Oh, Bill Schneiden was there as well. We had a really good meeting with, um, and um, Amy Williamson was there, and um, Dave Tilly, thank you, TJ. So we had a really great discussion where we went over the phase two audit results, and we went over the phase two list of things that the district has to complete. And it was a very collaborative discussion. I left that day feeling very good about our relationship with the state and how we are, the communication was great. They've basically told us that they will offer us at no charge um, assistance if we need somebody to come in and do training, if we need resources to assist us during this process. process. So we've got an awful lot of work to do. We realize that, but this collaborative effort effort that has started and I'm, I'm very positive will continue through this process so it's going to make our district stronger it's going to make our district better and our relationship with the state um, we continue to work on and I'm feeling very good about it so I'm very thankful to all the administrators that went up there I'll tell you I was so proud of the work they had done going into that meeting they were prepared they answered questions they had good conversations they were spot on our administrators know what they need to do and they, I'm confident that they are gonna get it done. So I was very proud of everybody at that meeting. Again, we have a lot of work ahead of us, but I, I have full confidence that uh, we're gonna come out of this much better and improved and we're gonna move on to bigger and better things. So thank you to TJ and everybody that was there. You did a really, really fantastic job. Thank you. Any other re uh, board reports? Okay, we'll move on to communications. <coughs> Director Potts, would you please read those for us? Uh, public content, July 1, Monday, Committee of the Whole Meeting, 5.30 at the ASC Jim Hester Boardroom. July 4, Thursday is a holiday, <coughs> Dublin Buildings closed. July 5th, Friday, closed. July 8th, Monday, regular board meeting, 6 o'clock at the ASC <coughs> Jim Hester Boardroom, and a reminder that there's only one regular board meeting in the month of July. Thank you. Next is open forum. We have three open forum requests this evening. Uh, open forum is a time for members of the community to give input at a board meeting regarding school district issues or concerns. Individuals who want to speak should fill out an open forum request and give it to the board secretary prior to open forum. The board will not act on any issue presented during open forum if it was not published as an agenda item. The Iowa Open Meetings Law prohibits action on any issue that is not on the agenda. The president will set the amount of time allowed for individuals to speak during open forum. The board asks that no charges or complaints be made against individual employees of the district or community during open forum. Remarks that reflect negatively on the character or motives of any person will be called out of order. Um, as I mentioned, we have three, and if you would come up in this order, come up to the microphone, give us your name and your address, and you'll each have two minutes. We'll start with Eric Johnson, followed by Heather Johnson, and followed by Mary Ray. Eric? Hello, it's Erie Johnson. I apologize for that. No problem. You wrote it as Erie, and I thought the E was a C. I apologize. No problem. Erie Johnson, 2429 East Lombard Street. I, um, my wife is going to speak after I do. I, I guess my comments will be brief. My, I want to express my concerns with the fact that we are eliminating jobs and eliminating paras on the ground level who are interacting with students, but I have not heard any information, I have not received any information about what's going on at an administrative level. I understand they have a lot on their plate right now going to Des Moines and working out the problems they have to do, but we also have to keep it on a, a balance on the side. The people who are working with the students on an everyday basis, um, they're needed. We, we basically didn't have enough teachers, enough paras before, but now reducing those. My daughter does attend Sutlow, and I just heard it now that 
the, her opportunity to take a foreign language has been severely limited. She might possibly be put in a lottery, whether she can take Spanish or not in seventh grade. Uh, going along with the mission and the vision, that's not a global society. We're not preparing our students to be global uh, entrepreneurs, leaders in the community, if only 30 out of, what, 275, 300 students can take Spanish, uh, which is obviously a big language in America right now. Uh, so I, I think that we, I, I ask when you do consider compensation packages, uh, maybe we release some information, what's going on at the administrative level, um, who's getting paid what. I know that comes up after the fact, but me finding out is 2020. I can't do anything with that information, but prior to, I mean, if there's positions that can be eliminated uh, where we can hire teachers and keep two languages compared to Bettendorf that has three language offers, uh, I don't even know what PV is offering, uh, but I think those are, these are things that the district has to think about. I can tell you right now, when I moved here, Davenport School District, I, was, I felt like it was solid. I know every school district has issues, but I felt like it was solid. If I knew this coming here now, this would make me rethink moving to Davenport. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Erie. Next is Heather Johnson. Okay, my name is Heather Johnson. My address is 2429 East Lombard Street in Davenport. I am the mother of an incoming seventh grade student at Sudlow. I was recently informed that Sudlow would be cutting foreign language for seventh graders so that only 30 students would be allowed to take any foreign language. Now last year there were a little over 80 students who were able to take both either Spanish or French and now that's being cut to 30 students and they're being chosen by a lottery. Um, I'm also concerned about another policy change that I've been told about at Sudlow which is the discontinuation of allowing students to take choir and band in one period so that they can they would be allowed to take a foreign language band and choir in the same year these are very important issues to me as a parent um, I have a daughter who was able to do all three well she was able to do band and choir last year. She's been looking forward to taking Spanish. She was able to take Spanish in grade school because she had a teacher who taught it after school and she's been looking forward to taking this um, since then. And now she's being told she has to make a choice between Spanish, if she even gets chosen, if she's one of the 30, and band and choir. This is not a decision that seventh graders should have to make. Um, in our most recent, the most recent comprehensive annual financial report from the Davenport School District, one of the curriculum highlights for intermediate schools was multiple year sequence in French and Spanish. That's not gonna happen anymore at Sudlow. That's a problem. Additionally, the report highlighted the district had a stellar world language curriculum that features up to seven years of French and Spanish. That's not gonna happen anymore either. These are, these are big issues that need to be addressed. Um, another big issue that we keep seeing, there's this new, Iowa just passed it, it's called the Seal of Biliteracy. It's encouraging <coughs> students to take a test to show that they know more than English. And colleges see this on a transcript, employers see this, and like I said, Iowa just <coughs> passed this. We had several central students who took this test and passed it last year by reducing the ability of intermediate students to take a foreign language, you're restricting their ability to earn things like this, to get that seal of biliteracy. Uh, I just really encourage the board to look into this. I've been in touch with the administration. They're not all that helpful, and you know, I've been told these are things that, are hap that have happened and they can't be changed, but I just can't accept that, and so I'm here to to try to get um, the board to look at, at these policies that I think are detrimental to our students. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. And next is Mary Ray. Hi, my name is Mary Ray. I live at 1520 West Third Street in Davenport. I'm here today to just mention to you about the Ask Me proposal that was submitted to you guys about 
opening up our contract or extending our contract for two additional years and then we were going to just take a 1% pay raise versus the 2.5%. That was our way of trying to help the district save money. It was brought back to us that that conversation could be had, but they were going to strip things out of our contract this current year before our current contract is even over. So we did withdraw our proposal because we are not willing to remove things from our contract this year. We you know, we knew that come the following year, yes, there would be things removed. But I just wanted the board to know, you know, the reason we did withdraw that is because we are not willing to already lose the things that we've already got now. So our proposal to extend our contract has been withdrawn and we will be going to negotiations for the next contract. So that I just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of what was going on. So. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. <clears throat> and thank you to Erie, Heather, and Mary. Um, the issues that you've brought forward are important. They're important for not only the board, but for our community, uh, everybody to be aware of these things. So thank you very much. Next is the consent agenda. May I have a motion? Mr. President. Director Hayes. I move that the board accept the consent agenda as written. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Okay, I'll call for the vote. Director Hayes. Yes. Director DeSalvo. Yes. Director Potts. Yes. Director Beck. Yeah. Yes. Director Mayfield. Yes. Director Gosia. Yes. And my vote is yes, motion carries, thank you. May I have a motion regarding approval of bills? Mr. President. Director DeSalvo. I move that the board approve, I'm sorry, I'm reading, administration's recommendation to approve the resolution as recommended by the administration for adoption of the bills from the bill listing periods of June 6, 2019 through June 19, 2019. Resolved all claims presented to the board having been duly certified as correct by the secretary, reviewed by the administration and board members, and they are hereby audited and allowed as just claims and warrants drawn on the treasury for the several amounts. Further resolved, the payment of claims and salaries be approved as presented for the periods of June 6, 2019 through June 19, 2019, with the following voided check number 362944 payable to Alpha Baking in the amount of $17,013.72 for the wrong amount. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Okay, we'll call for the vote. Director DeSalvo. Yes. Director Hayes. Yes. Director Potts. Yes. Director Beck. Yes. Director Mayfield. Yes. Director Gosa. Yes. And my vote is yes. Motion carries. Thank you. So superintendent report. None at this time. Okay. Move on to other items requiring action. I have a motion regarding the approval to amend the contract with the Mississippi Bend Area Education Agency. Mr. President. Director Hayes. I move that the board approve the contract amendment with AEA 9 to assist in hiring certified teachers to provide compensatory education hours at the cost of approximately 200,000, including a 2.5 administrative fee charge by AEA 9. Uh, thank you, is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All right. Call for the vote. Director Hayes. Yes. Director Beck. Yes. Director DeSalvo. Yes. Director Potts. Yes. Director Mayfield. Y yes. Director Gosa. Yes. 
And I'm going to abstain because I'm also on the AEA board. I don't know that there would be a conflict of interest in the vote, but uh, that's the reason I'm abstaining. Motion passes. May I have a uh, motion regarding approval of the amendment to the Creative Arts Academy lease? Mr. President. Direct Director DeSalvo. I move that the board accept administration's re recommendation to approve a lease amendment three for the Creative Arts Academy property in the amount not to exceed $15,000. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Director Hayes. I have a question on exhibit A number one, the fencing to secure the fire exit firewall estimated at $8,650. Yes, what's the question? The question was regarding the fencing. There is a contingency of $1,850 for the total authorization of $10,500. Could you explain all of that? The fencing has to go all the way to the ceiling to cover the fire escapes. Is also, that that back door? It's the two uh, side doors on the east and the west sides. There's a picture in there. Yeah. Okay. I guess I was just familiar with the one on the east side of the building. I didn't realize there was another one. Yep, there's one on both sides. So this cost is for two doors? Yes, okay. and the fencing to go up. There's a picture. Picture, you had requested picture, so I had seen a picture of what is exactly being fenced. And it, it, it has to go from the floor all the way up to the ceiling. Okay. So the, it basically the floor of the creative area. Correct. Okay. Thank you. With the appropriate Thank you. markers. Yes. Director DeSalvo. So we're leasing this space, correct? Correct. From the city of Davenport. Why are we having to pay for this? We're leasing it from the Eastern Iowa Community College. Okay, but still, then why are we having to pay? We don't own the building. So we're leasing it, we're sinking up to $15,000 in it, and let's say we walk away, that's not ours. Well, it's a um, improvement that the district would like to do. Because right now people go up there and they kind of hang out and they're disruptive to the class and the students. Have we taken this to Eastern Iowa Community Action and asked uh, Community College and asked them if they would be willing to pay for this for the safety of our students? I haven't done that, but I could. When is our lease up there? Five years. Five more in addition to the what we've been there two or three. No, nope, we've it's the first year, so this will be four more years after this year. We approved that a while back. Time. Okay. I, I'm, I'm struggling with that. I, I would really like you to go back to them to see if they would be willing to cover the cost. But it sounds like somebody's got a comment on it for me. I would just say on the uh, maintenance side, they're basically just presenting uh, an option for they consider a, a safety issue. They were asked to do that. That's the only quote they're getting that came from the people at the Creative Arts Academy. So we're just presenting the price. Whether to do it or not is not a recommendation we're making it's just here's what it would cost to entail that well i would like to see it done for the safety of our students but I, I don't know that we should have to support the cost of it being that it's not our building we don't own the property i worry about liability what if we don't do something they would like us to do what if something goes awry as typically happens with our projects and then we're in for more or what? I, I have some concerns with it uh, Obviously, I want to keep our students safe, but I'm, I'm concerned with us paying for this. I, I would like to take it up with them. Any other discussion? Uh, Director Beck. I'd sort of like to echo what uh, Director DeSalvo was saying. I definitely want our students safe, and that's the number one priority. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, if I were renting an apartment and I felt unsafe, I'd go to my landlord and say, can you fix this first? So I guess I would encourage you to do that first and then see if we can work something out because I don't want us to be on the hook 
um, especially if we decide we're not going to renew the lease in four years. Um, and I know it's only fifteen thousand dollars, but you know if they can pay for it, that's important. Part of that fifteen thousand is also for the signs. True. Signs. That's right. And I understand that we have to pay for the signs. That's <laughs> not a problem. Uh, any other discussion? I got a couple of comments or questions. I, I too, am a little bit troubled by this. Um, I, I don't quite understand. Um, I think what I heard was that this was not a recommendation by the administration. Huh? But it comes across as a, a recommendation. Um, and, and so I was curious, where did the thought come from? Was it from the board? Was it an administration? Was it, how did the idea come up that we should do all this? So if you look at the picture that you have, mm -hmm. in when you go to the top of the stairs, there's a space that's protected from the wind. It's protected from other outside areas and anybody can walk up there and you can't get inside the building. It's merely a fire escape. So in, you can imagine what a space like that might gather. And so our intent is to make sure that nobody can go up in there in case of an emergency that our students would have a clear egress um, of this space. Correct. So while we lease that building, we if we want something done to it, we we have to make those changes. And this is this is something above and beyond that we are recommending doing to keep that space safe. Accurate? That's accurate. If we wanted to change the flooring in there for the dance studio, we recommend that we pay it. In order to do it, it has to go before this board and their board to approve the leases. Because in order to do any kind of action on the building, we have to do that. So that's the thought process behind this recommendation. Um, so I think Director DeSalvo mentioned the possibility of liability uh, that could be incurred by making these modifications. Is that something that we think about and that we've, I don't even know how you do that. Um, do we go back to our insurance people or to determine whether we're actually causing more problem by putting that in? I did get with the fire marshal and he, he said as long as we had panic bars to go out, it was okay. Okay, so it protects on the way out, but it doesn't protect, I mean, on the, or it protects on the way in by only allowing certain people through. Is that kind of correct? If there's a, if they need to use the fire exits, they can go out the door on top, go down the stairs, and there's another panic bar on the, the gate that will open up for them. Okay. It only locks from the outside. Um, was, was that building or were our classes affected by any of the flooding? They were not, but I think we did close down for a week or two just to be safe. But wouldn't that mean that that our classes were affected if we closed down? Yes. Um, in that situation, so if they own the building, are they responsible for making sure that it's available to us during something like a flood? I'm just, I mean, I haven't looked at the contract. I'd have to say that that's, that's out of the region. Okay. Uh, is there anybody here that might be able to answer it? We you state your question again. Okay. I'm just asking that since I don't have a copy of the contract, if I'm leasing a building from EICC, would you think it would be their responsibility to protect us from a flood? so that we could go ahead and conduct our classes? Or is that, if something happens like that, is that just our fault? I will I will review the contract and get you an answer if there's okay. anything to do with flooding. All right. Is there, 
any urgency to passing this tonight? There is not. Okay. All right. Um, and so for those of you that have said, I'd like to see something different, um, this is on the agenda. It's already on the table. And so the appropriate way to, would be to um, oppose the motion if that's the way you're so inclined. Um, and we would move it forward later. Director Beck. Wouldn't we have to just vote to table it? Because if we oppose it, then it goes down and it can't be brought back. Oh, it can be brought back. Oh, it can be. Yeah, it can. The If you wanted to uh, postpone it, you could move to postpone indefinitely would be the best solution. What that does is it postpones it not till a certain date. It postpones it until a date that it's brought back. And so that's a motion that could be made also. Director DeSalvo. Mr. President, I move that we postpone voting on item 7.02, requesting further information. I would like to know uh, Eastern Iowa Community College's uh, stake in this game. All right, is there a second to the um, motion to postpone? Second. Is there any discussion on the motion to postpone? Okay, I'm gonna call for the vote. Director DeSalvo? Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Beck? Yes. Director Mayfield? Yes. Director Potts? No. Director Gosa? Yes. And my vote is yes. Motion carries this uh, issue has been postponed and will be brought up at a later time. Um, we have a motion regarding approval of graduation alliance contract. Mr. President. Director Beck. I move that the board approve amendment number two to the original agreement with graduation alliance as presented. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Director Beck. Um, I'm curious about the cost. It said per student, but $250,000 total. Um, and it sounds like we've only had just a few students. Um, and I know we're going to be potentially reevaluating it on a yearly basis, which is fine. But is that 250000 for the 13 students who are still in the program? I will ask that Pam Kirsch, our dropout specialist, come up and speak to Graduation Alliance. Um, hi, Pam Kirsch, graduate or uh, learning support specialist for the district. Sorry, <laughs> Pam Kirsch, learning support specialist for the district. Um, we currently have um, about 25 students enrolled in the program. Those are students that are carrying over. Um, I talked to uh, Superintendent Schneckloth about this and. We eventually want to try to phase this out. So the only students we'd be putting into this program this next year are the students who are very close to graduating who can finish within this next year. And we're going to be working to, to phase this out. That doesn't mean that I won't be standing in front of you next year at this time if we don't have everything together in order to be able to accommodate our students the way that we want to. But um, as, as the information I presented to you, this is the biggest barriers are making sure that we have enough courses available through our ingenuity program to be able to accommodate the students as well as having the technology in the students' hands. And that's the one thing the Graduation Alliance, they have a, a full course offering as well as they give the students a computer with a hotspot so that they have that access whenever they need it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Any other discussion? Director Hayes. Is it the number of students enrolled versus um, the dropout rate? Can you tell me what measures are we taking for retention? Or is that possibly the reason that it will be phased out? The, these are the students that I can't get in any other way. So I've already 
gone through the traditional schools, I've gone through Mid City, we've tried to re-engage them in any other way possible, but because of extenuating circumstances, whether with its their life circumstances or whatever it happens, we can't serve them in the schools and they would be dropouts and we would not be serving them at all. So these are the students that it's, we, we get them, we have their per pupil dollar amount and that's what the money that goes to Graduation Alliance the year after. So when we get the money in from the state, it goes back out to Graduation Alliance. We may be paying less than if we don't have the number of, you know, if we have 40 students enrolled on October 1st, but we phase that out, we won't be paying for all of that per pupil dollar amount, but we will be serving the students that we would not have been able to serve had we not had this program. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All right, we'll call for the vote. Director Beck. Yes. Director Hayes. Yes. Director Potts. Yes. Director DeSalvo. Yes. Director Mayfield. Yes. Director Gosa. Yes. And my vote is yes. Motion carries. Thank you. As I mentioned at the uh, beginning of the meeting, 7.04 and 7.05 will not be on the agenda for this evening, so we'll move on to 7.06. May I have a motion regarding approval of interim superintendent's contract? Mr. President. Director Hayes. I move the board approve the revised contract for T.J. Snackloff, the interim superintendent. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Director Beck. Uh, one quick question. I'm showing the little uh, document icon, but nothing shows up. Oh, okay. Never mind. Found it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> Director DeSalvo. I would just like to thank interim. Superintendent Snackloff for agreeing to stay through um, some incredibly challenging times and for his leadership through this time. Um, and I look forward to his continued role within the district and I'm glad that he is willing to stay with us as long as he has and, and continue into the future. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay. Call for the vote, Director Hayes. Yes. Director DeSalvo. Yes. Director Gosa. Yes. Director Beck. Yes. Director Potts. Yes. Director Mayfield. Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. Thank you. May I have a motion regarding approval of policies? Mr. President. Director Beck. The policy committee recommends the board approve the following policies. 504.02, personal appearance of students. 502.19, suicide prevention and ACEs training. 505.13, concussion management. 307.05, reward for information regarding vandalism. That's a deletion. 504.04, substance abuse. 504.09, cell phones and electronic devices. 505.12, student distribution of non-curricular materials. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Um, I guess I'm still running this part. Um, so the only thing I would say is that I, I am still, um, hmm questioning the cell phone and uh, electronic devices. I know we've had plenty of discussion, and I don't know if it's worth bringing it up as a, uh, uh, like having any sort of reviews. The, the one thing that I question, like I say, where, when I get comments from teachers that are talking about it, it concerns me and how it's affecting um, teaching and so my only thought on this 
is, is it worth having like a teacher panel or something like that, just to see what they say. I don't think there's the urgency to addressing the policy is probably just because it's in the review mm -hmm. cycle. Okay. So how, I don't know if it's how close we are and whether the state would be upset if we missed something by a month or two. My recommendation would be to not miss something <laughs> by a month or two. <laughs> um, this was last adopted uh, in April of 2014, so we're actually a little past the five years. All right. So I would recommend adopting it now, okay. and I'm certainly, I think, not a problem to discuss it. We can always revise it um, I'll, later. Uh, I'll just put it into a board request. That's perfect. Okay, thank you. Sorry for bringing that up. Any other discussion? Okay, we'll call for the vote. Director Beck? Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. Director DeSalvo? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. Director Mayfield? Yes. Director Gosa? Yes. And my vote is yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, next is discussion item, phase two update. So you gave the first portion of our phase two update, which was uh, very eloquently stated by Director DeSalvo. We spent an entire day negotiating timelines. And when we showed up in the room, we didn't know how it was gonna go. And e both sides at the end of the day admitted that. And it was a very collaborative effort to, to, to put markers down that allow us to come back to the table to determine, you know, are we doing what we said we were going to do, or is there? Do we need to sit down and, and look for more time, or this one is a very hard deadline? Uh, Amy Williamson kind of she facilitated the meeting, and I thought did a nice job. And at the end, I feel that we are we now have a roadmap of where we're going, and how fast we have to get there. Uh, I was very proud of our administration. Um, they spoke freely. They worked hard. And, and Director DeSalvo, you did a nice job representing the school board as well. So hats off to you in, in that regard. The big update that I would like to share with <coughs> this group is there's a, there is a, a, a group of leaders in Davenport that was established through the phase two um, uh, DSAMI work when, when they came. The DSAMI is essentially short for an internal assessment of how our system works. And, and from there, that group was created and it's comprised of leaders, teachers, central office staff, and it's a group of people that meet weekly. The big item that we are working on right now is the idea of accountability. And I know that the school board is very interested in accountability. We have a nat our very first national expert. Her name is Marque Winston. She is current. She is kind of. A, she's a systems expert. She's currently uh, employed in another school district, but has worked in the Chicago public schools and other large urban districts, and understands systems. So this our DSAT group sat down. We've been reviewing data. We've been an, uh, doing an analysis of our current situation. And we're looking at building a report card system that incorporates student outcomes that flows from the superintendent all the way down to our students and families. And part of that report card flow is tied into how we evaluate our overall system and effectiveness of different areas. So that group sat down. We, we had a very full day last Thursday. And the whole goal is to our around the ideas of disproportionality and goals of disproportionality, equity for all. And so we have a, a, a working plan for the direction we're going. What does that look like? Um, how often will the principals meet with the associate superintendents, associate superintendents meet with um, the superintendent? What do those goals look like? And we are now we now have a product that we will be taking to our national expert on Wednesday. Her name's Marque Winston, and she's going to be we're going to be reviewing that and giving feedback, and 
it all the way down to how we do walkthroughs inside of our building. And there were every level of our district was represented there, intermediate, high school, and elementary. Obviously, it's a it's it's um, something that's going to take tweaking all, all along the way. But this is one of our major actions coming out of phase one. And I'm very excited about this work because done right, it can be um, positive feedback. Who doesn't, who in their job doesn't want to know how they're doing and, and guidance of next steps. There isn't anybody that doesn't know that as long as it's done in a compassionate way. And, and that's our goal. And so we are looking to go into the month of July with a very clear plan that we can begin to communicate all the way through our system. So we are also working on our August um, citations that that document is shared with you. But we're also working with the State Department. They have a doc very similar to the document that we have. They have a document that's even clearer, I would say, mm -hmm. and you can sort and filter. Plus, it, it, it gives us um, vertical alignment with the state so they can see how we're doing, you can see how we're doing. And I believe that that will be a document that we can, kind of a 2.0 version of the spreadsheet that you have that, be, that shows how are we doing um, and how we're moving forward. So that's what's going on in the area of phase two right now. Dr. Goldstone and her crew are making appropriate progress on the citations that are, that are falling in HR, and we're also beginning to determine, okay, yeah, we can put the evaluations in off and make sure that we have them and collect them, but our, and our individual career development plans, but are they of high quality? Are they, are they giving teachers what they need to know? Are, is the feedback high quality? Is it, is it connected to our system? All of those things that make a, a great system were, were for evaluating and having those conversations. That, that, that concludes my update. Director Beck. Um, I appreciate your explanation because um, I remember one of the things that I kept asking about was the communication issues that we were cited for and how are we gonna communicate, how are we gonna deal with those citations. So I'm happy to see that you've got this in place because I think this gets at a lot of the questions I had about how do we know that we're getting information out to all the right people at all the right times and it's you know going where it needs to go when it needs to go so thank you director DeSalvo I would just add that um, I think we can share that spreadsheet did did we get an update from Amy okay so we're waiting for an update from the state and it's it's very good, like Bill Schneiden's spreadsheet, but um, kind of condensed. But it is the one that um, Amy will take back to the board and present updates. So um, I would just add that where TJ kind of, I'm sorry, Interim Superintendent <laughs> Sheckloff kind of ended his conversation that we had a lot of discussion about that day and our administration was wholeheartedly on board that it's more than just checking a box. These things have to be meaningful. They have to have fidelity and they have to be sustainable. And we are all very much committed to that. So I think that's a very important piece of it. So I hope maybe by Monday or, or maybe the board meeting in July that we can have that spreadsheet and I'll kind of keep track of it via that means. It's similar to bills, but more condensed and, and a little bit easier to read. So, um, but anyway, I, I'm, uh, again, the collaborative effort is phenomenal and, and will be very successful. Anything else? I got a couple things. Um, of course, I get uneasy when we're told, say, get it done by August. And my understanding was when the re question was asked at the meeting, it wasn't clear what August means, whether it means first of August, last of August, or sometime in August. That's what I got. And part of my uneasiness is that um, as we were going through phase one, and we kept saying, are we there, are we there, are we there? And I think most of it, um, we got done like with one day to spare. What I'm concerned with here is that we have one regular board meeting in July. And if, if as Director Beck said, with respect to even 
approving a policy. We better get it done when it's due and whatever that means. And so my uneasiness is that we don't have a due on August 1st, but we haven't even had a report to know that it isn't due. Then I suspect there's a good chance that we will be non-compliant. So, and in fact, even, well, I'll ask later, but um, is there any way we can get a more real-time um, uh, definition of where we are? I don't know exactly what it would look like, but we had asked for a report at every meeting originally, um, but I'm wondering whether there can be something that is more concrete. As you read in the report, the board will be given a mentor, as will the superintendent. And so as you work with that person through all of these things, I'm sure that it will become very clear what needs to be done and by when. And I understand that, except that from what I read, there was no listing of when that mentor would appear. It will, it'll be within the next month, I believe. They're, they're securing his contract right now. But, but if that person comes on August 1st, which is when the board is supposed to have done something, that's my concern. Is my understanding at the meeting that we had a couple of weeks ago that the August deadline was defined as August 30th. Oh, okay. I, I didn't hear that from anybody. I thought that board member, and I forgive me, names Mike. I thought he just said it could be any time in August. Any time in August up until October, up until August 30th. Okay. Wow. So up until. So, I mean, you can do it any time in August, right. but it's just um, August 30th was what I heard. Okay, but we can, we'll make that assumption that that's accurate then. You can, yeah. Is August 30th. Um, 31. What's August that? 31. There's 31. 31. Great. I can ask for clarification no. if you would like. No. <laughs> we'll take that. I'm taking Sandy's word. That's good. I mean, that's. How, that's how it was worded, and I just said, I interpret that to mean any time in August. But. but I can assure you, you will not have some of these questions in the future because your mentor will be here. Okay. So. Okay. Um, with respect to, like, right now, I mean, I, I understand you had the meeting, but is there any way to say, how are we doing right now? We are on pace to, as a matter of fact, a lot of the things. Dr. Goldson, why don't you come up and talk about where we are with our HR citation, because many of those are coming from the HR department, so we'll get an update. We have made um, progress on each of the citations. Either we have cleared them completely or we have a plan to address them, such as career development plans. Uh, building principals have been um, sent emails and asked to put them on a Google document. We are able to say what specific teachers may still not have a Google document. From our meeting uh, with the state, that means that in the fall, those teachers will start on uh, start at year one, tier two. Um, so we have that information. We are uploading that into the document. Um, another example is um, um, administrator evaluations. We have those uploaded, and under the leadership of Superintendent Schneckloff, he has done all evaluations this year. We will get those uplifted, uploaded into the system. So we've made lots of progress. Some we have completed. Um, others such as um, teacher peer review. I have had conversations with the union, with curriculum, and we will put a group together and I will write that and establish a timeline and we will be ready for full implementation for the 2021 school year, which is our deadline to have that uh, 
ready and going. So each of these items we have addressed, many of the items we have completed, and those other items we are almost there to be able to complete them. Associate Superintendent Schneiden created a document and it starts as a gray and that means the citation is there. If we have worked on it but still have a few pieces, it goes to yellow. And once we hit green, it means that it is completely done. And so we do have quite a few green. We will meet our deadline well before that August, dead, uh, August date. And just as someone that was at the meeting, we were told the end of August. Any time up until then, um, but it was the end of August as the final date. Uh, director to self. Is this out on Google Docs? Did we put that out there, the spreadsheet? I think it is an internal one, but it is one that uh, Associate Superintendent Snayton created. I know. And so I thought uh, board members were on that list. So I will double check to make sure that if you're not, you are so that you see as things are being completed, you'll know it right away. Yeah, I think that night that we were having trouble, some of us getting into board docs or Google okay. docs, yeah. um, we didn't have permissions. And then I think we got, I got an email from Jamie telling me I could, but I didn't go back. I'm pulling okay. one now. I'll double June check to make June. sure that all board members have ready access. And that's the beauty of a Google doc. As soon as you do something, it is ready for someone to see. Yeah. And we wanted this whole process to be as transparent as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. So maybe we could talk about that spreadsheet at the community hall meeting. It's going to change too. I know. Really. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Um, I've got a couple more things. I don't know if, if they're applicable to this part or not. One of the things that I've been informed of is that there are a lot of vacations coming up in the next few weeks. Will that impact um, progress on the completion of those issues or those items? No, it won't because as said HR department, I had set a deadline prior to the deadline to make sure that if we needed anything else, we would have time to do it and not running straight till the end. So no, that will not impact it at all. All right. Um, the other two, I don't know if, if they apply to you, Dr. Goldstone, but uh, one of them, I think, I don't remember if it was mentioned earlier or not, but I haven't seen any uh, updates. And I think we need something on the phase one update uh, or the phase one issues that we haven't completed. Um, I wanna know how, how we know how we're doing. Um, that seems like a lot of more challenging issues. They aren't, they aren't just things that we can complete and I'm wondering how we're doing and how we can get a reporting on that and how we report back to the state and to the state board. Uh, Director DeSalvo. So the two items from phase one that, that are still in progress have been combined now with items from phase two. I don't recall the new due dates that were given for mm -hmm. them, but they have been combined now. Um, we asked that very question of how was this, the state get updates? And so the spreadsheet that we're waiting to get um, from Amy Williamson, we will update that and she will take that back to the Board of Education and share that when she attends their meetings and provide updates to them there. Um, could they come back and say, yeah, you, you didn't finish this one or this one isn't to what we want, that could absolutely happen. Um, but we need to make sure when we say it's done, it's done and it's done um, exactly as expected. But she will be the one conveying updates to the Board of Education. Well, and maybe That's this is something, right? maybe I need to request a, uh, an agenda item. I think that um, disproportionality when it was first brought up in the citations on April 23rd of 2018, um, and as, as I listened and tried to understand everything that was being done and, and whatever the discussions were, what I was led to believe was that those two particular issues, the disproportionality with respect to the uh, placements and the disproportionality with respect to <coughs> discipline, um, 
were acknowledged to not be required to be completed by April 23rd of 2019. I don't know if that's an appropriate interpretation. That's what I thought, but then it seemed like on April 23rd, that's not what I interpreted from the uh, state. And I don't know whether you that have been in that meeting can talk about that. Where I'm going is that I still have no idea. What I've heard is that it takes years and years and years to get to being proportional. And I'm thinking if we have certain things, if we've got to complete it by April 23rd of 2020 or by November 15th of this year, I'd like to know. I don't have any concept of when that's all due. I was wondering if if one of you can either talk about it or I'll request it in a board request. I think that after we talk about this at the next committee of the whole, we can get you some more information of how it's been combined, combined with another I action item on the phase two list that has a due date. So we can talk more clearly. Now don't don't do that. Don't don't make wrong assumptions. Let's just wait and talk about it. I'm just so. curious if uh, I'm still going to request it here then because that that is stunning news to me. No, please don't take it like that. Don't misunderstand that we talked about it. Those in the room bail me out of this. <laughs> we talked mm -hmm. about it. We combined it with another action plan. No one is saying by this date this problem will be fixed. <laughs> Absolutely not. Right. It's going to be a work in progress. There are very specific things that have to be done, like someone in charge, a committee, all of these things that have to be done by that date. But no one by any means is saying, this will be done by this due date. Absolutely not. So please don't misunderstand. So my, do my, we my have vision. a plan? We have a plan. And it's written? It's written. For completion of phase one? It's combined with another item in phase two. So I'm not comfortable in telling you that phase one has a completion date. You're, please don't misunderstand. I would, I would like to bring you this plan where it's combined with an item on phase two, and we can talk about it at the next committee of the whole <coughs> meeting. That's what I would prefer to do. So we also, as um, Sandy mentioned, there are some experts in the field that will be working with the district as well to help uh, lead and guide uh, through addressing those issues, because something like disproportionality Unfortunately, it can't be talked about today and end it tomorrow. There is a very definite and specific process. So there will be an expert assigned to work with the district to address that issue and to eliminate it as quickly as possible. Sandy. Can I just, oh, yes. Um, phase one is basically over. The lack of progress in phase one caused phase two. So if any lack of progress in phase one has been folded into phase two, there's no phase one. Could, could I ask a clarifying question without being sure. incendiary? Sure. So the, the, the phase one, um, <coughs> was, was I mistaken? The, the two dis, the two, um, disproportionality citations, was I wrong in assuming that the state acknowledged, even before we got there, that those two would not be completed because what, hmm, maybe I shouldn't ask these questions in public. Um, You're saying phase one no longer exists. And if it no longer exists, then we are not in non-compliance with phase one, correct? No, what, what wasn't complete, phase one no longer exists as a separate report. Anything that was not completed in phase one was folded into phase two. <coughs> and it was the lack of action on disproportionality at from the time the district received the report on April 23rd to when you went in front of the state board on November 14th that led to phase two. And so um, that has all now been folded into phase two. So we don't need to go back and refer to the phase one report because it's all in phase two as a director DeSalvo indicated. 
um, those have been folded into other um, specific corrective actions. It's all there. I better not get into a debate. It's just that on November 14th, um, I don't believe that the state board ever stated that 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 was the reason for going to phase two. And, um, but I'll, maybe there's a way that I could talk with somebody about that. You know that that was very disconcerting um, for a number of reasons, but there was never, as far as I can recall, any discussion about that being the reason to go to phase two. And so, but well, you're saying that is absolutely the well, reason, and that's why the state board ordered the phase two, even before they heard you and Amy speak, one of them ordered the phase two uh, without even hearing what you had to say. That's not what I recall, but. Well, one of them prepared notes and sent a letter in with that recommendation to go to phase two without hearing what you and Amy had said. And what I heard, what I, what I heard was you two saying, hey, they got a heavy lift, but they're making it. So anyway. Well, at last week's meeting, one of the things that was said, there was progress being made, but had not reached the level that the state board wanted. And as a result, it was continuing in the phase two. So they did recognize that progress is being made, but there's still disproportionality. And, and I appreciate what you're saying, Dr. Goldstone. All I'm saying is that I was there at November 14th, and I've got I've got the recording and I've got the transcript and I know what they said. So, and I'm not going to be um, just politically correct um, and accept some of these, what I think are um, rewriting history. So, but I appreciate what you're saying, okay? Um, last question, and I'm sure it has nothing to do with you. Um, earlier you talked about um, the things that we're going to do in reaching out to a, a national mentor or leader that's going to help us with accountability. I took that to mean on the part of the students. And okay, it's something else. So um, one of the things that I've wondered in all of this and again, that teachers are coming to me, which is really rare. Uh, I've had more teachers come to me on these two issues, being cell phones, and the other is respect. And I'm just curious, is respect part of the, um, this whole issue of disproportionality? Um, are, are we going to be trying to make sure the students are respectful also, or is that not part of the training? I'm just curious if you can talk about that with respect to this whole issue. So in terms of behavior, a big part of the phase two report is that we implement positive behavior intervention systems with fidelity. So the national experts that will be ensuring that we implement that system with fidelity will, will come and there will be people that guide us along that. We, we have been implementing PBIS for a while, but this is going to make sure that we put it in with fidelity. And it will be, those, those level of supports are unheard of with the national experts and, and state right. people that are gonna come and, and help us do walkthroughs and make sure that we're implementing the way that we're supposed to be. So in terms of behavior, that is a system and it deals with respect, procedures, rules, those kinds of things, majors, minors, all of that. That's all a part of the system. So the answer to that is yes. The national expert, Mark A. Winston, she's helping our system in terms of accountability, leadership structure, and how information flows through our district. 
those are two separate things. That's why I kind of shook my head when I said, no, not directly at the students, which the ultimate goal is to improve student achievement, uh, improve outcomes. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Well, it may kind of. Um, I think I'll just accept it at that. Is there any other discussion on this issue? Did you have something? Director Beck. Um, with all due respect, I think I'd like to ask that we not worry about exactly what people said at particular meetings and that we go with what's written down, that disproportionality is a problem. We have a plan to work on it. And as long as we are working on it diligently and continue to work on it, we're never going to be done with this, this is a, you keep at it. You can't be done with something like this because any new hire, new students, new families come into the district, they all are gonna be subject to changing cultural changes. And until the entire country has the same cultural shift, which isn't realistic, we're gonna be working on it. So there's no putting a specific date on fixing disproportionality. That's not gonna happen. And so I think it's counterproductive for us to keep coming back to who said what and why did we get the phase two audit. We got it. We know what we have to do. We're all on board. So let's just move on and work, work from there. I respect your admonishment. Um, however, the, that particular meeting, I'm not going to just dismiss it. I think that, and I think that rewriting history is inappropriate. I do not think that things that were said at that meeting were appropriate. There were a lot of issues that were brought up that had nothing to do with a phase two audit. And so, like I say, I respect what you're saying, Director Beck, but I, uh, I, can't, I can't let something like that, which is probably one of the worst meetings I've ever experienced in my life, simply let go. And uh, the things that were said were, I think they were inappropriate with respect to the district and with respect to the board and with respect to me in particular. So um, it's, it's something that I just, I'm not going to just say okay. So um, any other discussion? Okay, we'll move on. Are there any administrative reports? None at this time. Are there any board requests? I actually have three of them. First is a, an agenda item request from uh, Johansson, and the description of the request is uh, discuss cell phone policy. Why are you requesting this information or agenda item? Because teachers have been talking to me with respect to how challenging teaching has become because of phones. Is there a second? Second. Who was it? When would you like this information or agenda item? Um, I didn't put anything down. I would say by uh, September. Second request is um, from Johansson. Date of request 62419, agenda item. Description of request. I'd like to discuss how the phase one noncompliance uh, is addressed in the phase two. And why am I request, or why is Johansson requesting that? Because I still don't understand how the two are fit together and how the, what was a non-compliance on April 23rd is not a non-compliance now. So um, is there a second? 
Okay. <coughs> and the last one is from Johansson, same date, agenda item. I'd like to discuss uh, student respect. And why? Because I've been getting notices from teachers talking about lack of respect from students. Is there a second? All right. No, those. A second. Oh, you do? Okay. <laughs> All right. And I'll just say as soon as reasonable. Okay, very good. Uh, that's it for the board requests. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 This meeting is adjourned.